Okay, now we're going to go into part two of our chemistry lecture, where we look at your organic compounds, things like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, DNA, RNA. So before we get there, let's just do some, do some overview of you know, how reactions work. So in a reaction, you can represent the event of a reaction by what's called a chemical equation. And in a chemical equation, for example, maybe say A plus B gives you C plus D. In, 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 in an equation, the things that's to the left of the arrow are called your reactants over here. And what they form normally, usually to the right of the arrow, you call your products. Reactants and products are the two sides of the arrow of a chemical equation. And these equations can do different things. So you have some, some types of chemical equations. You know, in general, you have equations that we call decomposition reactions. Okay. These reactions will break things down. So for example, you know, something like maybe A, B, would break down into A plus B. That's a decomp reaction. Typical of what you do in say your digestive system. Another example here could be maybe proteins get digested and they get broken down into individual amino acids. Okay, That's a decomp reaction. You also have reactions that build things. So you have your synthesis reactions. These are the opposite, of course, of decomp reactions where that now A plus B gives you C, right? So and a good example again would be again, amino acids, amino acids, one plus amino acid two would combine to form a peptide chain or a protein. That's building things up, reactions of synthesis. Then you have reactions where you exchange the components of you know, the reactants. So we call these your exchange react reactions, typical of ionic reactions. So here, for example, maybe you can have, just do, first, do, do a schematic, we have AB plus CD, we rearrange the partners so now, you, so now you can get AC plus BD. Just arrange, rearrange the partners. A good example here would be um, hydrochloric acid from the stomach will combine with sodium bicarbonate from the pancreas, and that will form the H will combine with the the carbonate parts you get H2CO3, that's carbonic acid, and the Cl and Na will com combine to form NaCl. That's an, an exchange reaction there. It's quite common in your digestive system. Okay. Then you have reactions which are reversible. So these are reactions that can go either way, that way or this way. So reversible. Reversible reactions you can have something like, say, um, A plus B can turn to C plus D, but C plus D can also become A plus B. So you can go either direction. That's called a reversible reaction. Normally written at it this way. Arrows are going, going both directions there. And a good example here, of course, would be our buffers from last time where you have, remember, we, we did, did um, carbonic acid can dissociate or not, it can go reversibly, form, you know, form your bicarbonate and your H plus, okay? And you can predict which way the reaction will go 
this, this, this can go both ways, based on what's called the law of mass action. Okay. And that law basically says that the reaction will go in a direction that will offset a change. Meaning, if this level goes up, the reaction will go this way to, re to rebalance the equation. Because imagine that, that it's, it's balanced this way. Balanced. And you add more over here. Then in order to make it balanced again, you have to add more over here. Okay? If you take away some from here, then you have to take away, take away some from here to, to make, it, make it balanced. That's the law of mass action. Always do a change to counter a change or counter something that happened. Okay. So those are the four main types of re reactions that, 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 that we have in the body. We will next look at things that affect the rate of reactions, meaning how fast they go. They can go fast or slow, depending on what's available in, in the reactor or in, in the environment. So things that affect the rate of reaction, meaning they go fast or slow. So let's do the things that, that make, make them go fast. So if you increase the concentration of reactants, meaning the thing on the left of the, of, the, of the arrow. If you make more of them available, then what happens is, is that they will hit each other more often to create, to break and create new bonds. So increasing the amount of reactants will lead to an increase in the reaction rate, okay? Another fact would be if you increase temperature, of the incubator, of the environment, that will cause, that will increase the, the kinetic energy of the reactants, which means they'll move faster, collide more often, again, to create new bonds. So as you increase temperature, you again will increase the rate of reaction. And a third, and probably the most common and more, probably most important factor is the presence of catalysts. So catalysts, or but this, this is what we call enzymes. These are proteins that can orient the reactants in a way such that the bonds that are there will break and new bonds will form. So enzymes, when they're there, will tremendously increase the speed of the reaction. Okay, so there's three factors that I just wanted to mention. The number of things there, how hot it is, and do we have an enzyme around? Okay, now, in order to build things in the body, you know, build your big organic compounds, you more or less use the same exact reaction. That reaction is called dehydration synthesis, okay? So, so let's look at that. This is a reaction that's used to build things in the body, build your big carbon-based compounds. So dehydration synthesis reactions. Here, it, it involves the removal of H2O, so that's called dehydration, and then the formation of a new bond. Let's try it. So, Let's say we have uh, an amino acid. Okay. This is an amino acid. And that amino acid will react with another amino acid. So you have two amino acids hanging hang around. When these amino acids interact with each other, react with each other, okay, they will form a bond eventually between them, but first they will remove H2O. And what happens is the, the, the amino group here will donate this H, and the carboxyl group here will donate this OH. And so H plus OH 
gives you H2O. And once that's removed, then you form a bond between these two things. Okay. So what I have to so what you end up with after you remove water is this. end up with some amino acids still here and the carbon of the R group and, and now this amino group here will just have one H remaining and then it will form a bond with this carbon. There you go. You have a bigger molecule and you've formed a new bond between them by removing water from the reactants. That's why it's called dehydration synthesis. And if you have, say, a bunch of, a bunch of amino acids linked together, linked together to form a big protein, each bond that's formed is done the same exact way. You pull a water out and join them together for each bond. So you see, see if you have a thousand bonds, you've done this a thousand times. Each react, each bond requires that you dehydrate and then form a bond, okay? That's dehydration synthesis. Now, when you want to go the opposite way, to break things down, you use another reaction. One that we call hydrolysis or condensation. So to break things down, you use hydrolysis. And here basically the steps are you add water to break to break a bond. So let's start with. Let's go back to your, um, to your dipeptide, where you have, again, your amino acid here. Okay. Here is your amino group that's now linked to the carboxyl group. So when you want to break this bond here, this is the bond of the bond of interest that we want to break, because, because that's, that's where you join the two pop, um, monomers together. Here you take water, H2O, and you, you, will, you will ionize the water. Okay, ionize it into OH minus and H plus. Okay. And then you attach, you, you bring these players in to go target the bond. So one will go there and one will go here. So at the end, once these two ions get involved in the reaction, you end up with this and this amino group will pick up a hydrogen from the water. So now it's happy and more stable. And then the other part of it, the carboxyl group will pick up the OH to form a stable amino acid or a stable, a stable molecule, and there you go. Okay, you have broken the bond by adding water to the, to the reactants. That's called a hydrolysis reaction. Okay, we'll pause there.